Welcome to a brand new episode of Law and Batting Order. I'm your host, Tony Iliacostas. Here are some quick hits from the past two weeks. After weeks of speculation and rumors swirling around, Major League Baseball finally laid down the hammer and punished 13 players for their possession or use of PEDs coming from the Miami-based health clinic Biogenesis. Of the 13 players suspended, 12 of them accepted a 50-game suspension and agreed to not appeal their suspension. While a majority of the players are lesser-known players, some notable names given suspensions include Nelson Cruz, Everett Cabrera, and Johnny Peralta. And then there's Alex Rodriguez, who was not suspended 50 games or even 100 games. MLB suspended A-Rod for a whopping 211 games. That suspension covers possession and use of PEDs and HGH, while also obstructing the MLB Commissioner's Office in their investigation of the Biogenesis scandal. A-Rod is appealing this suspension, and a decision will be made in November of this year. While MLB has handed out their suspensions, don't be surprised if Major League Baseball tears up their current drug testing policy and looks into creating a new and potentially more stringent policy. As we enter the dog days of summer, we're a few weeks closer to the start of the NFL season, but August is dedicated to preseason football. And while it may not be relevant to a majority of football fans, it provides an opportunity for players to shine and potentially earn a starting spot on their roster. This week, we saw glimpses of hope for certain players trying to get a starting nod on their team. One player includes Mark Sanchez, who actually played decently in his game versus the Lions despite throwing an interception on his first drive. And then there's Matt Castle. Yes, the Matt Castle. The same guy who took over for Tom Brady in New England when Brady injured himself during the 2008 season and played very well. This is also the same Matt Castle who helped lead the 2010 Kansas City Chiefs to the playoffs. While falling into obscurity last season, he showed flashes of his old self in a Vikings jersey this week, throwing 212 yards with a QB rating of 96.8. While Christian Ponder may be the starting quarterback, don't be surprised if Matt Castle turns some heads and takes the job from Ponder. Again, I know it's preseason football and it may be irrelevant to some, but it's our first look at football before the season kicks off in September. I have talked about pay-for-play on a consistent basis here on Labo, and we have yet another story about a collegiate athlete accepting a monetary award in exchange for sports memorabilia. This athlete's name is 2012 Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Manziel. Media reports suggested that Johnny Football signed autographs in exchange for money. If the NCAA finds proof of these autographs, then Johnny Football may be ruled ineligible to play for the 2013 season. While I don't have a position one way or the other on the pay-for-play debate, this investigation could potentially lead to some huge outcry from the public, particularly that the NCAA's bureaucratic system may need some revisions. Today's Order of the Court will discuss the heinous and abhorrent act of hate crimes. We are all created equal, whether we have different skin colors, speak different languages, or are born in different countries. And while a majority of society embraces this principle, there are those who simply do not accept those who are different than them. This lack of acceptance unfortunately leads to the commission of crime targeted towards those who are of a different race, ethnic origin, gender, or other characteristic. This week, we had an unfortunate incident of a hate crime in the sports world. This hate crime involved the vandalism of a statue of Jackie Robinson outside of MCU Park in Brooklyn, New York, where the Mets farm system, the Brooklyn Cyclones, play. The statue was covered in racial and anti-Semitic slurs and swastikas, and the phrase How Hitler was sprayed on the base of the statue. The NYPD is looking for the actor behind this crime and is treating this as a hate crime. While many people facially know what a hate crime constitutes, not many know the law behind it, and it's very convenient that I can talk about hate crimes on Labo as this example involves Jackie Robinson, an icon and a leader who helped break the color barrier in Major League Baseball in 1947. So in today's episode, I'll break down the hate crime law in New York and discuss how it applies in the defacing of the Jackie Robinson statue outside of Brooklyn's MCU Park. New York's Penal Law Section 45.05 clearly articulates what qualifies as a hate crime. Section 1 of New York's hate crime statute states the following. A person commits a hate crime when he or she commits a specified offense and either intentionally selects the person against whom the offense is committed or intended to be committed in whole or in substantial part because of a belief or perception regarding the race, color, national origin, ancestry, gender, religion, religious practice, age, disability, or sexual orientation of a person, regardless of whether the belief or perception is correct, or intentionally commits the act or acts constituting the offense in whole or in substantial part 
because of a belief or perception regarding the race, color, national origin, ancestry, gender, religion, religious practice, age, disability, or sexual orientation of a person, regardless of whether the belief or perception is correct. Section 2 of the statute states in relevant part that the race, color, national origin, or other biological characteristic of the defendant, victim, or both does not by itself constitute enough legal evidence to meet the burdens listed in Section 1. Section 3 of the statute goes into great length listing all the specified offenses that must be committed in order for a hate crime to be considered. In this case, one of the specified offenses in Section 3 that applies to the vandalism of the Jackie Robinson statute is criminal mischief potentially criminal mischief in the second degree. According to New York's Penal Law, Section 145.10, a person is guilty of criminal mischief in the second degree when the person acts with intent to damage property of another person, and having no right to do so, nor any reasonable ground to believe that he has such right, he damages property of another person in an amount exceeding $1,500. So how do these rules tie back to the defacing of the Jackie Robinson statute? It's simple. The statue was property of the Brooklyn Cyclones since the statue was on ballpark grounds. It's also likely that this statue is privately owned by the Cyclones and is worth more than $1,500. Criminal mischief qualifies here because there was a substantial damage to an expensive statue. Jackie Robinson's statue is smothered in spray paint with hate speech all over it. Furthermore, because the statue is covered in anti-Semitic and racial slurs, the words in the act target particular groups. The groups in this case are Jewish people and African Americans. The fact that these hateful words were written on the statue of an icon who helped break baseball's color barrier makes for a far more convincing case that this is a hate crime. The suspect or suspects behind this hate crime are still out there and the NYPD are vigilantly performing an investigation. But unfortunately, as sports fans, we have to bear witness to this lowly crime. Before I wrap up today's episode, I wanted to make two announcements. The first is that last week, Law & Betting Order's website received a brand new look and this redesign makes the website look even better. The user interface on the site is simpler with links to Labo social media sites being front and center. And the new website even features the debut of the Labo shop where you can buy some Labo swag. The second announcement is that Labo was personally invited by the fine folks of Fox Sports 1 and 1iota to attend a taping of a new show coming to Fox Sports 1 called Crowd Goes Wild. This is a huge honor, and I'm looking forward to checking out this new and exciting show. If you're interested in attending a taping of Crowd Goes Wild, visit the link below this video that will discuss how you can get tickets to the show via One Iota's page. And I'll be sure to take as many pictures as I can from the taping and share them with you all. Anyway, that's the show. Leave all your comments down below, and be sure to visit Law & Batting Order at lawandbattingorder.com, as well as on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Take care, guys.